Hi, everybody. My name is Melanie Keller, and I am the Associate Artistic Director of First Folio Theater. And today I have the great privilege of talking to my friend Chris Kriz, who is an artistic associate of, with First Folio, and he is also a composer and sound designer. So, uh, Chris, first, I want you to tell me a little bit about how you came to be an artistic associate of First Folio. When did you start working with the company? Uh, I guess I answered an ad uh, around 2009. I was looking for more uh, new companies to work with, and, um, and there was an ad for a designer for a show. Um, I came out and met David and Allison and did that show, and they haven't asked me to leave since so that's pretty much it <laughs> and what was the first show you did uh uh it was uh the castle of otranto oh yes which was one of the first indoor shows that i think we we worked on yeah um and now you have subsequently worked on indoor and outdoor shows at first folio right yeah i've done most most of the shows uh for the last decade or so and uh, yeah, I do the outdoor show and most of the indoor shows if I am available. Yeah, and you are a very, very in-demand sound designer and composer. Um, so speaking of that mouthful, um, what does it mean to be a sound designer and a composer in the theater? Like, what is your job description? What do you do? Uh, if we're talking about the outdoor stage, uh, the biggest part of that job is amplification. Mm -hmm. um, of, of the actors. My, what I see my primary sort of focus as is as a composer. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what I enjoy the most. And, and so I write incidental music for, for most of the plays. And sometimes that's just music for transitions. And sometimes that's a much bigger score, underscore, or writing a whole musical like we did with uh, uh, Shrewd. Yeah, yeah, you were the composer for that whole entire brand new musical that had not existed, uh, which sounds like a lot of work. Um, I, I want to ask a little bit more about the composition piece of what you do. Um, I've had the privilege of working with you as a director a few times. And, you know, I know that that when we get started in the process, we'll sit down and we'll have some, some conversations about you know, what do we think this sound, the show might sound like? Um, and I know that for Mary's wedding, I specifically um, was talking about a lot of underscoring and said I wanted something that was like Adagio's, um, Barbara's Adagio. Mm -hmm. And there was one day in rehearsal where there was just this particular scene and you had written this great piece of music, but I, I was, I felt really like I was being a pain in the neck, but I was like, no, Chris, that's not quite it. It needs to be more like this and less like that. And as I was walking out of the theater, you said, hey, Keller, is that is this your adagio moment? I was like, yes, that's it. And I came back the next day and you had written this gorgeous legato piece of music that was perfect for the scene. So I guess my question is, how the heck do you do that? It, uh, I mean, I guess that's it's just, sort of what I do it's it's I don't think about it much it's just you know we all have our skills and 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 uh you know being able to come up with you know music sort of intuitively that sort of works and fits is you know it's just from you know decades of doing it and and, and training and and investment and which gives me the facility to sit down and do it quickly and it's usually you know um in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And you are doing this very quickly. Like I have seen you write pieces of music, you know, in, in a matter of, you're like, go away, give me 15 minutes and come back to me. And then you'll have something. Like, I, I really think that that's amazing. Yeah, I do, I do work quickly. And, and, I, and I usually work very late in the process mm -hmm. because I can't really write music for a show until I like know what it is. So it's not until I really see a run through of a play, which is maybe sometimes just a week or a few days before we tech. Um, uh, uh, and then I score the whole thing like a film, you know, it, it's just like, um, uh, so it's, it's easier for me to, um, to just see it all in, in one and see the arc of it and just sort of make notes of, you know, this, this moment, this moment, this moment, and, and, and then just, you know, sit down and do it quickly that's that's what works 
best for me anyway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's good when I get to work with people often like yourself, because then there's a level of understanding and trust and, you know, uh, um, that comes with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen you in tech rehearsals when you, you bring a small keyboard, piano keyboard into rehearsal that like plugs into your computer and you can just compose things right there. Um, so that's a really cool piece of equipment, but I'm sure you've got like a big schmancy keyboard at, at home in a studio. Yeah, every, everything's computer based, you know, uh, mm -hmm. these sort of sample based instruments that I can play, which sound, you know, very realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and most of the time you can't tell the difference between what's uh, a live instrument versus a computer instrument these days, which is a blessing and a curse. But for me, it allows me to create, you know, an orchestral score, which, mm -hmm you know, most theater budgets can't afford. So, <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's been great. But yeah, I have a, you know, studio upstairs with a, uh, a big setup. I can just grab this here because I know it will delight you, but this is the, uh, yes, yes, that's this, it. This is the, uh, the keyboard controller that I, that I have at the tech table and it's just a little USB plug-in, you know, and I, and uh, this makes no sound of its own. It, it just mm -hmm. controls the, uh, the computer sounds. That is so cool. <laughs> were, you, um, were you a musician growing up? What instruments did you play? Who who turned you on to music? Yeah, my whole family was musical. My mother and father were both musicians. My brother and sister are musicians. Um, so music was everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the first thing I ever touched was a piano. Mm -hmm. um, ironically, the first instrument I was trained on was the saxophone. But, but piano, piano and percussion were sort of my focus and, mm -hmm. and that's what I that's that's all I play now is because everything is keyboard based for right. me. So you're playing the keyboard even though it may sound like the trumpet in your headphones? Right. Did you were you in the theater uh, in school or when did you sort of realize that like you could do you could be a musician in the theater? Mm -hmm. I started as an actor believe it or not uh, um, all through all through uh, high school, I was sort of you know Mr. Lead Actor in all the plays, and mm -hmm. then as soon as I got out of high school, um, I never acted again, you know, formally, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and just you know my freshman year of college, I sort of devoted myself as being a music composition theory student, mm -hmm. uh, but I was working in theater still all the time. I was a carpenter and an electrician and and and. Uh, rigging and all that, all that stuff. Um, and then when I was around 20, a uh, director asked me, knew that I was a composer and asked me to write music for a production, a student production of Midsummer Night's Dream, mm -hmm. which I did. And it was kind of like, kaboom, hey, this is a lot of fun. And um, because I've always been, you know, I like the, the blending of the visual and music you know film scoring is is something else i'm interested in but uh, but i love live theater and so being able to blend those two worlds was uh, uh, just sort of an eye opener and mm -hmm. gradually i got more in, into i was always a, an audio engineer also like mixing concerts and things like that so the sound design and the music sort of just all came along the same path so speaking of film, because I know, you know, maybe the job of a, of a sound designer in theater and a composer for theater is something that people might not be as familiar with, but like we may know some film um, composers. I give you John Williams. So since you've brought up film a couple of times, like do you have favorite uh, film composers? I, I of course, uh, uh, I, there's, there's a lot of like, I mean, John Williams, of course, is, a master and has anyone created more iconic music than him i don't think so um uh, outside of perhaps beethoven <laughs> 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 but um uh and, you know classic orchestral scores i love um but you know newer newer scores uh, composers like thomas newman like his score for american beauty if if you can remember that film was kind of a game changer Mm -hmm. you know and it you know it was that all that marimba and percussion and piano based it you know sort of like made you couldn't use a marimba for like a decade after that after that film because it was just so iconic um 
although that didn't stop me. Um, so here's my last question. What have you been watching or perhaps doing during the quarantine time? Yeah, it's funny. I, I had looked forward to this downtime because I have, you know, a laundry list of unfinished projects and 30 years of old recorded stuff that needs to be digitized and archived and just or finished in the first place kind of thing. Uh, and I've done some of that. I started out strong, but then the couch was calling, you know, uh, uh, what could I do? Um, but I, I've watched a bunch of stuff start to finish that I hadn't watched, like all of Game of Thrones, uh, Homeland, uh, Better Call Saul, uh, lots of documentaries, lots of music documentaries. Fortunately, <laughs> we have a lot of them to watch, so. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much, Chris, for taking a little time to hang out and tell me a little bit more about what you do. Um, I have so much admiration and respect for everything that you do. And we will see you back in the theater sometime soon, I hope. I hope that's very true.